Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I am back to share a fun little Christmas craft that's going to be very versatile, hopefully give you lots of different ideas of how you can adapt it or you can follow um, exactly what I'm showing you today. And so what we're going to be doing is repurposing old curtain rings. Now you can often find these in op shops or you might have some in your cupboard already um, to create beautiful little Christmas decorations. Now these could also be adapted for other seasons and other holidays. Um, um, and even as like little special birthday gifts or other sorts of things but we'll be doing Christmas ones today and we will be making one which um, we do some stitching into to make a little mini embroidery um, wrapped with wool and then with a beautiful uh, Christmas fabric backing and a wrapped um, specialty wool that I got from um, Karlund Yarns and you can see another video where I talk about that lovely um, sort of small sections of wool I got and then they can just hang beautifully on um, the tree so that's one and you could do as much or as little embroidery in the center as you want and I'll talk about some other ideas for that as well as we go then we've got a little snowflake design which is made by repurposing an old doily and cutting out sections of it or old um, crocheted tray cloths and it just creates a lovely double-sided um, decoration again and then thirdly making a personalized wreath um, I've used the beautiful um, wool again for this one but you could just use a tapestry wool or other um, knitting wool that you might have some leftover bits of ideally in a green I think to get that sort of wreath effect but you could play around with other other ideas as well and you could go as crazy as you wanted um, decorating them you could add um, gold sequins or red sequins um, I've just gone for some simple beaded lettering um, to spell out the name Elix with a with a love heart so yeah have a look around see if you can find some wooden um, or other curtain rings and we'll get stuck into making these so we might start with this one because we first of all need to cut out and glue on um, the piece that's going to be embroidered because we need that to set a little bit before we sort of continue continue on with that one. So I'm going to grab myself some calico and what you want to do is give it a nine um, and then um, draw around one of your curtain or the one that you're going to use if they, if they happen to be different sizes. Oops. And don't worry because we're going to be cutting inside the line of it. I'm using a friction marker which does a raise with heat but it would be okay to use a normal pen as well because you're going to cut within the shape. And I'm just using some Calico but you could also use beautiful um, fabric to embroider onto. So if you've got some lovely Christmas fabric like this one here, what you can do is cut out a section um, like this and then you could just put some beading into the center or do some further over gold work or you wouldn't even have to potentially stitch it at all um, or do any embroidery on it and you've got just a beautiful little uh, stained glass window type effect so that's another idea which I won't be showing you but you can apply this technique that I'm using to to that one so I'm going to cut around just inside um, where this circle is drawn and it doesn't have to be totally precise because we'll be actually covering um, the back with a piece of fabric and felt and some of that wool so you won't actually be able to see this at the back. So what you want to do at, um, when it's done is make sure that it's um, just covering the back and that you'll be able to glue the sides um, down. So here's a piece that I have actually ironed, although it doesn't quite look that ironed. Um, and I'm going to use um, some fabric glue. This is just one that I got from Kmart, I think. And I'll use my knitting, knitting needle, trusty old knitting needle that I use for a variety of crafts, including getting my Epiflex templates out. And I'm going to put some glue around. Better put a piece of paper under so I don't accidentally get glue on my my felt mat. So let's just pop that in there for the moment. And I'll grab, grab a 
wads of papers. And just set that aside for a moment. So we're going to write um, something on our piece of fabric. So I might write the word love, I think. And you want to leave enough area around so that when the outside sitting on it, you can still see the letters. So you need to leave a bit of a bit of a border. Let me just move this up. And so it's good if you just let the glue get a little bit tacky before you um, yeah, stick stick your fabric on. And then you want to line it up so you might want to just put sort of a bit of a bit of a line in so you can see where you want to line to the top and then push it down. And as you're doing this, you'll want to just sort of stretch it out a little bit so that it gets a nice taut finish like you would have with the um, embroidery hoop. And if you'd like to see some lovely Christmas crafts um, using embroidery hoops and doing embroidery in those to make um, larger hangings, have a look at Martha Managross. Um, she's one of my stitchy buddies here on YouTube and she's been doing some great great videos with that so that's now nicely stretched and we've got our, our letters in there if you've decided that you didn't like your letters you can always um, erase them with with heat but I think that will do do the job for today so I'm just going to let that um, set um, before we start stitching into it and we can probably now move on and do our little um, because this one also requires glue so I've got um, a doily that you can see I've cut into it's got some staining on it so I don't mind cutting into it and I'm going to then just work my way around and take out two of the individual circle elements out of here now I'm just having a look if my little scissors are hiding somewhere nearby Otherwise, I'll have to use my, my big scissors. I'm not quite sure where my little scissors are. Oh, there they are. Over here. We get there in the end. So I'm just going to snip between. Um, and most doilies, they don't tend to sort of unravel. So you can be relatively quick, although you can take longer if you want to. But I'll just do the quick, the quick version. So I hope you're having a lovely crafty day. Hopefully you're getting into the, the spirit of crafting for the holidays. And as I say, you could adapt these to sort of whatever holiday you wanted to do them for. one so once you've got them cut out you can just check how they're going to look um, on your your ring so you might have to play around and have a look what you've got in your stash um, but you could even do like smaller ones for example and just cut um, a section of those those out but generally you'll find this is a pretty common sort of um, design so I think if you've got some old old doilies you might find one in the mix that um, will work this way and this one's really simple um, at least for the base, but then you can do further further things with it, which I'll talk about. So let me just get a bit of a bit of the glue. So you're just going to um, put some glue around again. The knitting work needle does work very well just to get a nice nice amount of glue on here. So again, just the fabric glue I'm using, but PVA could do the could do the trick as well, I'm sure. So yeah, generally doilies will have a front and a back, so you can generally work out which way they're meant to go. And again, we'll just use that method just to stretch them out a little bit as they start to tack on to the glue. So you can let the glue sit for a moment like I did before with the other one, just so it starts to get extra 
extra tacky. And you can just wipe off any excess that's around that you don't don't need onto your fingers. And it's handy to keep a um, a face a wetted down face washer when you are working with glue and working with threads, because then you can just wipe your wipe your hands. Um, so I just keep one in a little plastic tub, and I can just wipe my fingers in between doing doing things. So there's that one on that side, and then we can put one on the other side. So again, just having a look at which one's front and back. I think that's the back, that's the front, I think. And then we'll put some glue around again. do the same technique and you can kind of line them up a little bit if you want but um, it'll, they'll still create that lovely yeah stained glass effect and yeah you can certainly put some colors of fabric behind it as well if you want but I do quite like it just in its natural natural snowflakey form and you can find white doilies as well if you want to have a snowflake that is crystal crystal white so again just stretching it out a little bit as you stick it down I'll get rid of these little taily bits on the top here. It's a good thing about secondhand things, you get all sorts of little things wrapped around them. And I'll take that little tail off that's there. Glue that down. And then if you do want to sort of just yeah give anything a trim, you can always just do that as well. But yeah, you get that lovely effect of looking through and seeing seeing through to the other other side. So yeah, that's a very sweet little one. And then if you wanted to, you could also um, put some little stitches in, similar to here, but you could just be stitching across and around um, the border. But I quite just like to keep them simple. And then what I've done is just used a vintage um, crochet yarn, just create a little loop for this one. So that's a really simple idea that's, yeah, just really beautiful, looks really homemade um, and is sure to be a winner at Christmas. So we might leave this one still sticking um, down for a little bit longer and we'll move on to this one. So, and I might just clean off while we're doing that. I'll just clean off my knitting needle because we won't need glue until a bit later, a bit later on. Okay, I'm just cleaning it off on a piece of paper and putting the lid back on the glue. fingers a little bit of a wipe. Make sure there's no yucky glue on them before we get playing with wool. Okay, so we'll need a decent quantity of wool. So make sure I take plenty off. And we'll grab one of these and so what we will do I can't remember um, yeah I'll just take I think I'll take my first one through here take it around and then I'll start wrapping over the surface of that so I'll just leave that one down there Get our first wrap over and that will hold it hold it in place again you could always use a tiny bit of glue to start if you want it um, but I'll be putting a few stitches in at the end anyway which will hold it all in place and so you're just going to work your way around wrapping as you go and pushing it up so it gets nice and nice and tight 
and the lovely thing about this particular yarn is it's variegated so it changes color as we go but again even if you were using a regular yarn you could either just use it straight in this form or you could use if you've got ink tents or other sort of paints and things to add your own variegation to it so that's a thought as well or you could wrap two um, different colors of green yarn together and you'd get a bit of a variegation within the piece so you'll just need to keep pulling it pulling it through as you go or you could have a little bundle um, of thread but it's quite a nice tactile activity when you've got such lovely wool such beautiful yarns I'm definitely going to get some more of the little sample bundles of or the end of end of run bundles of this this wool it's just just gorgeous almost didn't want to use it but I was like Christine you've got it to you so <laughs> don't don't hoard it and as well you'll get to enjoy enjoy looking at it so I'm thinking these little um, ornaments will probably be what I create as the little table um, pieces with the names of our guests coming for Christmas um, and I'll probably do a different variety of them even these ones I was thinking you could put a little bit of embroidery of a name um, around you do it before you stuck it on so that's the that's the plan I'll have to keep an eye out now for some more um, I've got a whole bundle over here but I'll be keeping an eye out in op shops and now that I've got a fun little activity to to make with them and there's lots more ideas I've got about how you could decorate these ones but these were just three that I particularly liked and came up with last night when I was having a play in my craft room we'd had a big Friday night going out and big for us anyway <laughs> For those of us that are, are home souls, we'd um, yeah been out for a beautiful birthday dinner with a friend. And a beautiful Italian meal, so much food, my goodness. Um, at a lovely restaurant in a seaside part of Melbourne um, and yeah we sat out in the courtyard it's lovely because they're doggy friendly so Travis the pup was able to come with us and Dante the pup was there too and yeah sat out in the courtyard lit with little little twinkling lights and the cool change was coming starting to come through after a hot day it was still pretty warm but just lovely to be out there it just felt like a summer evening enjoying good company celebrating a birthday and um, yeah beautiful beautiful food they make these savory Italian sort of like almost like an Italian donut bread um, with like salted on the outside and you eat it with prosciutto and with a special um, Italian soft cheese and oh my goodness but even just the, the fried little um, savory donuts I could just eat those by themselves it's probably good that I don't have those every day because they are probably not the not the best for you but so at this point um, I've made sure it's all wrapped um, I can possibly maybe even do one more I'm just gonna ease it around to make sure it push it all the way around so that it's really really tight and that you don't see the the wood through it don't see the wood for the trees no that's not what we mean okay and then I'll just bring it up and I'll take it over to the back and I probably this is one of those times when I probably should have said at the start get a piece of um, thread ready but it's okay we'll just sit it down and it won't I don't think it will unravel so get a needle get a piece of coordinating colored thread thread up your needle put a little knot in the end however you like to do your knotting Oops. that didn't actually knot it slid all the way down and slid all the way off let me do it again keep a bit of hold on it this time there we go and I'll cut it off nice and close to the knot um, because we'll just be hiding that knot in the in the yarn so what I'll do is I'll just pop through with my needle and pop out and it will put the little tail knot in down in between the yarns I'll just give it a little tug and it will, should secure itself in there and then I'm just going to put some little stitches in to meld this into the other wool oops caught on itself 
And so if you can find a colours, I'm working into the dark a bit where this darker thread works particularly well and we'll just kind of get it to attach itself in, try not to loop itself around the, the loopy bit. Oops. Come on. Just manage to get the thread around here. There we go. Got it off. So I'll just put a few more securing stitches in just to make sure it's going to stay nicely tied and this will also help with the starting piece as well because we should be in this process stitching stitching through those starting pieces as well and I'll probably just take a couple across and through just to be sure that everything is kind of secured so just um, jumping back in similar point where you came out so that you're not really leaving much much thread showing and again I've managed to hook onto my little hook there we go unhook it and again I'll just um, do a little stitch and hide my thread then into the fabric so I'll just put a stitch and a knot in place Oops, caught my tail in what have I done there I've made a mess of it haven't I but that's okay I'm just gonna Give it a little snipperoo off because it is knotted there now. Um, and now we can decorate it. So as I mentioned, you could use a sequins, for example, or you can um, use if you've got these little letterings. So yeah, if you were using sequins, you could just arrange them around. Um, so we can do that actually as a bit of a change because you've seen the lettering there. Um, with the lettering um, they're just little beads and so you just pop up um, similar um, and you'll see kind of the same technique that we'll use on the sequins anyway and I usually put a couple of stitches in just so you hold them nice and securely but yeah let's put some put some sequins on might grab some red thread I want to do that and whether I want to put a little bead on maybe as well now we're getting fancy now have I got some red little beads got these ones just have to see if I need to get one of my other um, needles out that will take these beads yeah that one that needles too big let me just have a look if any of my other little little needles are here I think these are all about the same size. That one's maybe a bit finer. Or otherwise, I can get past the problem by using some slightly larger beads. Let me have a look what else I've got in the mix in here. I've got some nice, spotted some nice ones last night that are, uh, they're actually quite nice, a nice goldy one. So maybe we'll give, maybe we'll give those a go. Or otherwise I've got these larger ones but I think they might be a little bit on the too large side of things improvising as we go so again I'll put a knot in place Not. I just retie one at the end that's not so messy. Just a small one to start. Just needs to be enough to anchor it into the into the wall. Okay. through from the back again just get the tail to anchor in hopefully hopefully it will let me anchor it into the, I just want to get it just hidden into the fabric and then I can do another little stitch bringing it over and then another little stitch bringing it over to here 
so they're becoming little invisible stitches but just anchoring it into the fabric and then I might even just take it down a tiny bit further so that we put our first little sequin in here and then we'll put a sequin and we can grab one of our little little beads some other beads this is a lovely little vintage tray and I can just put my beads in there for ease of picking them up oops and nope that even that needle's going to be too big I should go back to one of these thinner headed ones beads are lovely but they always need a thinnish thinnish needle and the tiny beads, they need those really nasty little vicious needles. And then we're going to attach it in like that. I think I'm happy with them on their, on their side, so that's fine. And if I wanted to, I could come back through, um, which is always a good thing to do, just to make sure that your bead is going to stay secure and your sequin. So putting a second stitch in to anchor it in place. So there we go. And then we can work our way around. So again, I'm always just putting very now, I'm virtually going back into the felt right next to where I popped out with my thread. And then I'm just working my way around the piece to get to where I want to do the next sequence. I'm even going to go a bit further around. But what I'm doing is just passing my thread through the um, through the wool, but hiding it in the hiding it in the wool. So we can do our next little sequin. Grab our next little bead. Oops, and sometimes they're they're um, a narrower bead they won't even work on the on the needle see that's a narrow one someone told me that I need to look out for a bead reamer which I've not actually heard of before but apparently they exist and they will help you make the whole of your bead um, larger so thank you very much for that suggestion definitely keep an eye out for one so I'll just go back in look for where my hole is pop out a bit further out wherever the needle wants to go and then pop back in and pop back out of the sequin hole again and put a second a second stitch in place through the bead and back down through the sequin and then back out through the wool to anchor it in place so they almost look, look like little candles, I think, um, on the on the wreath. I think that's going to be really pretty. So yeah, the sky is endless with the possibilities um, for these little decorations. And just use what you have. Don't feel you have to go out and buy special supplies. Just have a look what you've got and, and work with that. Have a play. Playing is very good. It's the heart of all creativity, just starting to play with what you've got. I just love yeah repurposing things particularly things like this that were just sitting in a in an op shop unloved unwanted in the odds and sods sods bin that one's too I'm trying to look for ones that look like they've got a big hole in them I could of course go do a, a thinner needle but I don't want to have to do that so I'll just keep looking out for the ones that look a bit bigger And we'll just lay our little little bead down. This one's wanting to sit up, but that's okay. Not too fussed how they how they sit. Going back in, putting our next stitch through. This will probably get it to lay down flat. That's the other benefit of doing two stitches is that you um, yeah, it just helps the bead to settle where you want it to be. Oh, 
that just looks so lovely. I'm really pleased with that. Glad I, glad I improvised. So I think everyone will get a slightly different one for the table. I think it'll be nice just to, yeah, to have have that variety. to scatter sequins everywhere. Will that be about the next right place? I think so. Let's see if I can find a big bead to begin with. Nope, not wanting to go on. No, that one doesn't either. We'll get there. We will get there in time. Just getting it positioned where I want it to be. Doesn't matter if some are a bit closer than the others. I don't think that's a real, that's not going to be a real issue for you. But you can always, with that second stitch, if you want to sort of move it a bit, you can, yeah, generally maneuver it a bit. Like I've just pulled it a bit further around. And if you had like little flowers or something, or little holly and beads, you could also put them put them on. Which I think I probably need to go a little bit further over on this one. I'm just having a look where the central line is and I'm thinking I should probably space the next one a bit a smidge further over so I'll just take the needle over to where I want it to be Just bringing the needle back up to put that second stitch in place. Again, you don't have to do that. It just means it's all a little bit more secure. And with Christmas decorations, I guess you want them to last the last the years. Isn't it lovely how every year you can kind of get them out and um, yeah, have all the memories associated with when you got or made different decorations. Most a lot of our decorations are yeah handmade because I do enjoy doing doing that. Further around. Okay, let's see if we can find one that's big enough. Nope, that one wouldn't even go down the some of them look big, but then I think they must be thinner on the on the inside. Nope, that one doesn't want to go. I really should have got my beading needle out, but never mind. Trial and error and we will get there. No, that one doesn't even want to go over the tip. Funny how you can sometimes have a whole run of them that are being very stubborn. Oh, there we go. Finally, jackpot with the bead. Pop 
opening back through and positioning. Pop further along to our next spot. Maybe a little bit further up. I'm just sort of making them come approximately where the other other ones were, keeping it sort of yeah sitting sitting straight. Um, grab another sequin. Try for a. A bead that will behave. No, nope, not wanting to behave. Let me see if I have a if I have a closer look myself. Can I pick one that looks like it's got a larger, a larger hole? That one looks like a larger bead, but no, it's a tiny hole. They can be quite deceptive. There we go. again popping out second stitch in and then we can pop along to the the final point to put the sequin in little hops here. I think it was just a bit hard to push through at the angle I was. So do another little hop up to here. And then a little hop around to around to here. Grab another sequin, find a bead. They all look about the same size to me, so I don't know how I'm going to go. No, see, I thought that one looked bigger, but no, I think I just have to randomly select them and, and see. Nope. Oops, and I've just unthreaded my needle. That's incredibly, <laughs> incredibly unhelpful. Let me just re-thread before we go on. Wouldn't be a video if I didn't unthread my needle, really, would it? Hopefully you're crafting away and just all relaxing and you don't mind the therapy of watching me wrangle with my needle and beads. Always give you the real. I don't fast forward, I don't edit out the stuff. It's just like, nah, you get to see how it is. Otherwise, I think people sort of start to think that, yeah, unless you do things perfect, perfectly or unless they go perfectly all the time, you kind of, you're a bit hard on yourself. But if you see other people bumbling around a little bit, you're like, okay, it happens to everyone. And this is meant to be relaxing too, so there's no point stressing yourself out when you're, when you're crafting. So that is... A beautiful I'm very pleased with that so um, we would just let me do this I need to probably come back this way we'll probably just take our thread to the back which I'll need to do from the front from that hole I'll just take it to the back a bit further round I just go over to where we had our other stitches as well Out little bits of fluff off the surface and then we'll just put a little little holding stitch in place a little knot and then we'll hide the end into the fabric so what you do when you want to hide your end in is you pass your needle back into the fabric near to where you put your little knot in 
pass it so that it's going to pop out and then just snip off your little tail of your thread close to where the eye of the needle is and then drag your end back into the fabric or not into the fabric in this case into the wool and it will hide your little end in there and then we can just put a lovely little thread on it probably a red thread would be nice or a gold one maybe um, and that's a sweet little decoration and you could even if you wanted to put then some beading on the other side of it so that when it swings around it's got two two sides and maybe even I might on this one spell out um, the word love or you could put someone's name on it as well and even on this one you could go up and um, add sequins and decorations um, suggest getting your beading needle out if you are going to going to go the, go down that path um, so that's that one done so we've got two done and let's come back to doing our embroidered one with the word love so I have got some thread I did have some thread where has my red thread gone it is hiding I actually cut some off um, here but I cannot see it now so um, we might need to cut some more off not sure where it's gone so I'll find a find an end to use thread up a needle I might even actually use one of my larger needles or possibly this one actually because it's got a nice size to it and we can then just start um, embroidering from the back so again the back's going to be covered so it doesn't matter if you've got a, a messy a messy back or a messy backside as Annie Claxton would say from Artie Party Annie she loves her messy backsides on her stitchery swap squares we're all happily enjoying round two of the stitchery swap and so I'm just doing a split stitch where you come up halfway inside um, the previous stitch. It gives you just a nice little dimensional, dimensional stitch. And using this pearl A thread, which is a thicker, thicker thread. So it'll give just a nice thickness to the piece. Or you could do a whipped, a whipped running stitch, although it might be hard to bring, do the whipping because you're working inside this area here. Um, you could also stitch it before you um, put it into here. So you could stitch it in a, in a hoop if you wanted and then cut out the piece and then put it on. That's another possibility, but this almost, almost makes an, its own little embroidery hoop. So it's kind of cool. Hopefully this is giving you some fun ideas of things you can try. believe how many weeks it is till Christmas it's kind of crazy I know those of you in the US you've got Thanksgiving coming up haven't you whereas for us we'll probably think about putting our Christmas tree up soon I think it's nice to have it not just for the month of December I like to have it a bit longer so I do love looking at it with its little twinkling lights and decorations all over And then I'll soon have to start thinking about Christmas baking because we don't really do um, presents per se, but I always make lots of um, yeah beautiful homemade baked goodies, which people really appreciate because so many people already have all the things that they actually want or want or need. So it's nice to give something 
something edible and tasty and lovely. So I've got a few things that I make every year, sort of traditional family traditions, really. And that friends sort of also know. They're like, oh, there are your plum puddings. Yep. Full of brandy and chocolate and fruit and deliciousness. So they decorate. They're like little truffles, I guess, like um, fruity dried fruit truffles with lots of cocoa and um, coated in chocolate and then decorated to look like a mini plum pudding. I think I might have reversed direction slightly on my um, split stitches there but it won't make a difference it's all just about getting it getting it stitched in place. And again, because it's going to have the fabric backing, you don't need to worry about having carried your threads here because the fabric backing will mean that it's not see-through, so you won't see the sort of the back threads shining through. Whereas if your piece was just going to hang up like this, you'd probably need to think about sort of ending it off and doing it very neatly after each, each letter. So yeah, having a longer needle is helpful when you're kind of working on a something that's got a bit of bit of width to it. Otherwise you'd be sort of struggling to kind of yeah hold your shorter needle as you pulled it through. Come up here next. And again, don't get too fussed about if your letters look a little bit crooked. I think it just adds to the adds to the charm of it. We're not wanting something that looks like it was made um, by a machine. We want something that was made with love. So there we go. Um, if you wanted to at this point, you could also like do a little stitchery um, around the, the inside, but we're actually going to be putting some um, holding anchoring stitches on over the, the ring. So we'll do that now, um, but I'll tie this off because I'll need a longer piece for that, that next stage. Tie this off on the back. Again, don't worry about any bulk you've got here because we'll be putting a piece of felt over the over the back. Let me see if I can get a piece out without being tangled. Let's see if I can find the end first of all of this. That could be the that could be more of a challenge than we think. Dogs are having a good bark out in the, the street or the probably in the houses and someone's probably probably a dog's going by in the street. My craft table overlooks the the street and the sort of the distance. We're up on a hill so it's yeah nice spot. Looks out on the trees, sky. So I will start by popping through, wherever you want to start on it, I'll just pop through from here. And then we're just going to go our way around, um, sort of evenly spacing as we go. So the next time, and I'm just sort of bringing my needle through just where the ring, um, the curtain ring is. I'll just sort of move them, position them as I start off. And yeah, you just want to sort of space them out about that spacing. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You could use something thicker here as well, but I just like to use the coordinating um, colour that I've used for the actual writing. That's what I did on this one. Um, that's a sort of a mohair. It's got a bit of um, fluff in the, the lovely yarn. Again, that was from Carlund Yarns. Beautiful handcrafted artisan, artisan yarns.
So it's the weekend here, Sunday, having a lovely crafty day. Travis and Alex have headed off to visit Nonna's house. It's nice for Alex to have some time with his, his parents. Travis loves it, he always gets Nonna, treats him to a, a fruit platter, usually with a bit of cheese as well. He is spoilt by Nonna. Nonna loves Travis. Travis is a dog for those that uh, might not be regular watchers here. If, you are, if you're not a regular watcher, thanks so much for, for coming by. And if you'd like to have other videos of slow stitching, crafting, just fun things, lots of repurposing, creating. Also do a stitch along, although we're getting, we're through to the letter S, aren't we? Yeah. So I'm going, going A to Z in stitches in, to create a dictionary of stitches which I'll soon have to start putting it together. That might be a Christmas, Christmas activity in those nice long summer days that we get here in Australia. For some of you, you'll, you get a very cold Christmas. Some of you probably even get a snowy Christmas, which I've never had. Just slide them round if they sort of get out of out of whack a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly spaced. When you stick your piece on the back, it will also just help to hold these in place, but. The main thing is it's just attaching your little piece of embroidery and making sure it's nice and secure. And just adds a nice little effect to the curtain ring. Um, you could of course paint your curtain rings if you wanted to make them gold or something. You could do that or white or whatever colour, silver, green. But I've just decided to use them in their natural, natural colour. They're fake wood colour. Well, they are wood, but I think it's like a, a stain on them or whatever. Or a varnish. And so then for this final one, we'll take it through to here and I'll probably just hook it, hook it where the other, where the knot is. Get that in place. And I might even just run my needle. I think I did this on the other one as well, which will just help to hold these, these last ones in place where we want them. Apologies for the dogs. They're still barking outside. Thankfully, Travis isn't a barker. He'll only just do a little guard dog bark if he thinks someone is coming in the, within the sort of perimeter or the vicinity of the property, but he doesn't bark like that on, onwards and onwards, which we're grateful for. So there you go, it's a little radiating heart. So now we'll work on the back and I think I'll use this same lovely, lovely, lovely fabric. And we'll pick something that we want to be um, sort of within the, the back area. So we could have a little, little Christmas trees. They could be quite cute if I, I guess I need the top of them. So like that, I suppose. also need some felt. And I've just got this scrap of felt from the reverse art truck where I get a lot of my crafty supplies from. So again just using my friction marker although because this is going to be covered in fabric it wouldn't matter what you used on it. Got my circle drawn. Cut out the circle. Just cutting around the outside of the line to start and we'll just see how that looks. Get that 
into the bin. Tiny bit too wide, so I might just trim it down a little smidgeroo around. Again, we're going to be kind of folding our folding our fabric around. Oops. Oops. A little roller. I've got now a um, one that's you can just rinse and um, use the sort of plastic over and over again. So I'll have to give that one a go. And so I'm going to cut out where I've drawn the line. I'm going to cut out wider than that because we're going to be folding um, the fabric underneath um, the felt so that the fabric doesn't have a raw edge on the outside. So I'm leaving a sort of a margin around it. That. So that will work like that and then I'll just put some little slits in so the slits are going to mean we can fold it and it will um, have that sort of circular shape rather than having angular shapes on the side. This is what you do for needle turn applique when you've got a curve as well. But we're going to do be doing glue applique. You could do it needle turn as well, but just keeping it nice and nice and simple for the activity that we're doing. Um, and then which way? Yeah, I'll put the fluffy side on the underside. glue here, put it here. Don't need too much, just enough to just enough to hold it hold it in place. And then I'll proceed to put some glue around the edge where we're going to be folding our fabric over. It doesn't matter if you go over because we'll be then gluing this onto the, the back of the other piece. to be sure and again you can just use some old felt scraps this one's a nice it's a, probably more of a, a felt that they might use I guess in in car interiors or something like that it's a thicker one that's got a sort of a thicker back but you could use whatever it's just to have a sort of a, a layer that you can adhere onto and that will just provide a bit of a bit of structure and so then we're just going to fold and you can do this from the front as well so that you can kind of see that you're getting a nice curved edge as you go. And again, don't worry about your lines if you've used a friction marker because you can just apply some heat like with a hairdryer at the end and the lines will disappear. I think I might need a bit more, a bit more glue. I need to just add a bit more glue for these pieces as well. That piece even. Probably not that much needed, but that's okay. Just keep working our way around. And as you can see, because you've cut those little slits, it's just giving a really nice um, circular effect. This is great if you want to make yourself a little brooch or something as well. You can use this similar, similar technique with fabric. Now we'll be affixing some more glue so we just need to get it to kind of just hold enough that we can kind of get it glued glued down. 
and again don't worry if there are any tiny little points points like that it's not going to be a problem because you're going to be putting your piece of wool around as well or a nice braid or something else that you might want to put around the outside Oops. again I should have paper on my work area but no I don't do I just have to be careful a little little wipe and it's okay to just let your um, glue get an extra little bit tacky and then you want to make sure it's up the right direction so I want my star pointing towards the the top top of my piece and then we'll push that down push that down onto it and then to and again you might just want to here just straighten out your um, your little threads so that they sit where you want them to sit and then we can put some of our yarn around the outside so you could might even try this time just using this um, finer yarn I wonder how that would look no, I think I'll use the thicker one I think I'll use my nice nice beautiful green although I'd have this bit left is that gonna that was from when we were doing the round of the other that will be the perfect size yay meant to be okay so to put our um, yarn on I just need to not get quite so much glue on my on my knitting needle and I'm just going to work my way around and just apply some glue so that the yarn can take hold but again I'll be putting some stitches in the top anyway so um, it's not the end of the world if you don't get it all stuck in place. I think I'll just clean, just gonna clean my knitting needle off. The paper. And then I'm going to start at the top and just lay the yarn around, which just gives a beautiful, beautiful finishing, finishing effect. And you can just see that nice little ring from the front, which just adds a bit of extra, extra detail and interest. I'm going to overlap it just slightly at the top. And then we will take, have we still got a needle that has this green thread in it? No, we don't. So we'll grab some more of our nice green thread. Grab a needle. And again, even with this fabric at the back, you could do beading on it, like you could put little beads on the, the tree before you stick it on, obviously. You'd want to do all your stitching first. So you can make them as ornate as you would like. So I'll just come through from underneath, hide the knot in the, in the little seam part. And then I'm just going to put some little stitches in place, ideally not going through my through my loop, don't know how I even managed to do that. And I'll just stitch it, stitch it on a little bit. Just anchor these two ends in place and just get them sort of sitting down nicely and felting, almost felting into each other. Not doing felting obviously, but kind of that same effect. to get them to sit a bit flatter. And you can actually wait. It's um, sometimes hard when you've got glue. You don't want to get your needle um, and thread all gummed up. But I'm just doing it now so I get it done um, while I'm on video with you. So you can kind of see the effect. But yeah, normally I'd let the, let it dry, dry in between. But 
but that's now combined the ends nicely so I'll just um, finish it off with a little little knot although it's actually going through the glue so I don't think I'd even need to actually um, finish it with a knot so I'll probably just trim it trim it off make sure that's all stuck stuck down just press it down around make sure your backs nicely adhered on um, and again if you wanted you could also do some further little threads um, over it but I just think that's yeah incredibly sweet it's a lovely lovely little decoration and you could even make your own little wreath with these as well so the possibilities possibilities are endless hopefully you enjoyed um, our little making session today um, and yeah hope you give it a go let me know if you do I would love to hear how you find it and other ideas that you have for these thanks so much for watching everyone bye